Trigger warning for leftists. In this video, I'm going to freely use the terms woke and wokeism, words initially introduced by the left as part of their attempt to control language. But now that we use it pejoratively, they criticize us for using those words. Now, if this bothers you, so much the better. Because if you curl up with some hot cocoa with rainbow-shaped mini marshmallows, you'll be fine. Well, the spirit of Christmas giving has been tarnished a bit this season with the revelation that the Salvation Army has published a new course of study for salvation. It's called Let's Talk About Racism. It urges members to actively confront Christianity's historic racism. Now, on the positive side, it does say that this activity is for salvationists, quote, who choose to participate, end quote. And it does say that there are no correct answers just the will to have an authentic conversation, prayerfully and open to the Holy Spirit. You're even allowed to disagree, but there's a glossary of terms so that you use the correct language when you do. The main course book has a more concise companion document called The Study Guide on Racism. Both were created by the Salvation Army's International Social Justice Commission. They talk about unity in Scripture, but they still manage to parrot Ibram X. Kendi's anti-racist view that white people carry unconscious bias. It reads, and again I quote, The subtle nature of racism is such that people who are not consciously racist easily function with the privileges, empowerment, and benefits of dominant ethnicity, thus unintentionally perpetuating injustice. End quote. The Let's Talk About Racism book is the more in-depth of the two, with an exhaustive glossary of terms. We all know it's very important to use the right vocabulary. That is, at least until the progressives decide to change it. For example, structural racism is the overarching system of racial bias across institutions and society. These systems give privileges to white people, resulting in disadvantages to blacks. Racist policy is any measure that produces or sustains racial inequality between racial groups. That refers to the anti-racist concept of equity, meaning equal outcomes for all groups. Now, the implication? Racism is the only possible reason for disparities along racial lines. It also defines racism so that only white people can be racist. Racism is the prejudice treatment, stereotyping, or discrimination of people of color on the basis of race. It's the system of social advantage based on a hierarchy of skin color that it describes as lightest on top and working down through darker shades. I'm not making this stuff up. And here, I thought racism was simply thinking differently of another person based on the color of their skin. How foolish of me. Have you ever noticed how the left only gets nuanced when they don't like the obvious answer? You'd think the solution to this hierarchy that they've talked about would be to adopt what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said about judging people by the content of their character and not by the color of their skin. But no, that's not it. Apparently, putting more emphasis on character than color ignores the discrimination that our black and brown brothers and sisters face and does not allow us to address racism properly. Much of what's in the guide is very good. There's a lot about unity. On the first page, called the Salvation Army International Positional Statement on Racism, it denounces racism in all its forms. But the Salvation Army apparently is not seeing what millions of concerned Christian parents do that some of the anti-racist principles espoused here are in themselves racist. The guide wisely says, racism is fundamentally incompatible with the Christian conviction that all people are made in the image of God and are equal in value. The Salvation Army believes that the world is enriched by a diversity of cultures and ethnicity. Now that's spot on, but only if you use the real definition of racism. The Salvation Army has since said that they will review their racism guides. I guess that's some consolation. But the fact that they started down that path to begin with tells me they're not walking it back for any good reason. Steve Hilton on his Sunday Fox News show, The Next Revolution, had a segment about wokeism in general, which of course includes critical race theory. Now, that seemingly is everybody 
has the attitude that they're all woke. The Democrat Party, the media, corporate America, even classroom teachers and local school boards. He explained that this authoritarian ideology dates from the 1920s in Germany, from the Frankfurt School of Marxist philosophy. And it was done originally as a strategy to get the oppressed proletariats to rise up and throw off their capitalistic masters, as they had thus far failed to do. These Marxists decided that three things were in the way, and these three things had to be destroyed. Faith, family, and culture. Wokeism targets all three. In fact, Hilton's guest Michael Schellenberger, in an article on Substack.com, argues that it in itself is a religion, as it's based on a whole series of mythological and supernatural beliefs. But sadly, it can take the place of actual religion, which is to say, the worship of God. For example, climate change. Schellenberger argues the belief that the world is coming to an end, saying it's a religious idea. It's not based in science, but in faith. These are supernatural views, Schellenberger says, that accompany the new morality of victim ideology. But he thinks we're going to see wokeism come to an end because there are unfortunate consequences from this ideology, such as the dramatic rise in crime. He thinks reality will intrude upon woke religion and that most Americans really just want to be equal citizens under the law. But for now, the religion of wokeness is making problems of racism and injustice even more difficult to solve. Now, if you want to know how to solve all the problems in America, gosh, there's an easy way to do that. It's simple. Just subscribe to the channel that you're watching right now. Be sure to click the notification bell and leave a like and a comment while you're at it. By the way, join me this Friday for another live stream. And if you want more of my news analysis and commentary, I got a great idea. Sign up for my free newsletter by going to MikeHuckabee.com. It really is free, I promise. That's going to do it for this edition of The Breakdown. I'm Mike Huckabee.